Yo, 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 yo. Technical difficulties this morning. DC forgot about me. Left me hanging in the hanging in the wind. No, I'm just kidding. What's up, everybody? Yo, 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 yo. What's good? It's uh Taco Tuesdays, and we didn't have no tacos yet. But we're doing art because it's art school, right? Tuesdays. Yo, so how's everybody doing? How was you guys? This, uh, we had a little, we had a little quick little social coins scare this weekend, but you know, things will bounce back. It's good. Um, just good reminder for all of you that are getting your financial financials in line, you know, get a diversify, make sure you have multiple wallets. Make sure you, uh, make sure you got some, some of your savings locked up and die. Make sure you, um, got some, some of your crypto sitting in an exchange, like, you know, security. It's good though. These things, these things need to happen for the technology to evolve. Right. So, um, for all of us, some of us got hit, some of us didn't get hit, you know, it's another day in crypto world, but we're early. So we're going to get back to, we're going to get back to the, the cool stuff. So we're going to get um, back into digital arts. So to this week, we're going to be talking about digital painting. So if you guys were following along um, the last couple of weeks, we jumped into like the history of digital art, where we were looking at ASCII and ANSI symbols and pixel art. And then last week we got into kind of tools and talked about tablets and we did a Photoshop demo. Today we're going to be playing around with uh, digital painting. Um, originally, I had an idea to go into digital illustration using Illustrator. I think I might save that for another week because I think like an Illustrator uh, tutorial could be really, really, really fresh. But we're going to play with Procreate today, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite apps. And we're going to look at some digital art. So let's look at uh, digital painting. So for some of you that, you know, if you if you're if you're like me, you're old school, and you still you still got the your your old school painting painting tools. Ooh, let me turn this off. They would do this. Turn hiding on. There we go. Hey, there we go. It's a little bit better. So if you're if if you play around with a lot of a lot of uh, as an artist, if you play around and you have tools, um, you know. Painting in acrylic, painting in oil, painting in watercolor, they're all different mediums, right? And digital art and digital painting is a medium on its own. Now, one of the big differences, aside from the, the main difference, key difference of physical painting and digital painting is, you know, your use of paints. So when it comes to like physical materials, whether you're using an, an oil or an acrylic based or a water based pigment, um, you can simulate some of those effects in digital painting. A lot of what digital painters that I see in concept illustrators do is they, they use these like really soft airbrush, airbrush techniques. But if you pull back and you want to go a little bit, you want to make it look a little more realistic, you can, there's some tricks and some clever ways to make some of your work, your digital work look like it's an actual, uh, physical piece. And so we'll, we'll play around with that today. Um, one of those techniques that I love is watercolor. I love watercolor. Um, it's so much fun. Again, I think last week we were talking about like, yo, if you really want a self-discipline exercise, like make some watercolor washes. It's a really good exercise as an artist to do for you just to get into the mode of not overdoing something, like not overdoing it, right? Like, watercolor is a very you have to be there's there's the patience involved but there's also there's also a knowing when to like chill out you know like let the water do the work is kind of kind of the kind of the thing so um cool so yeah so digital painting as we get into it a lot of digital painters use photoshop photoshop i think is probably one of the most powerful tools that you can get um, and use for doing digital painting. It's really, really robust. I mean, Photoshop is, you know, it's a photo composition editor. It's as a design application. It's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. But like, you know, jump, jumping into this, um, 
What I wanted to look at first is where to kind of get inspiration and drive and also like portfolio review. Where can you discover and find things about digital painting? Um, Deviant Art has been around for years. Pretty much everybody should have be on there. But De Deviant Art is also a really, really great resource for finding for finding not only inspiration and technique, but there's a lot of arts that post like YouTube tutorial videos or they'll post their their brush packs and stuff. So I I highly suggest that you jump into Deviant Art and just get lost in there for a little bit. It's 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 amazing. Um, and I found I was going through I was I was going to try to compile up a good little resource list. I was looking at QBrush. QBrush is another, it's like a paid marketplace for finding brushes and resources. Um, I will say if you're jumping into Photoshop or if you're jumping into Procreate for digital painting, you want to get a bunch of brushes and you want to play around with stuff and try to figure out what works for you. I've made my own brushes before, done it via, you can do it a couple ways like with the iPad in Procreate, like you can make brushes fairly, fairly easy. It's really, really simple. You just, you like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take a piece of paper and I'll paint black ink on it and then take a picture of it with my iPad and, and trim it and cut it out and then make my brush stamp. Um, but you can also, you know, just go and buy and, and, and experiment. Also with digital painting, like concept designers that I've, I've worked with in the past or people that I've worked with um, at previous previous jobs that were professional concept illustrators and, and digital painters, they have like, you know, crazy, crazy little toolkits of all kinds of crazy tricks. And if, and if you watch, if you watch like a professional uh, digital painter work, you'll see that like, sometimes they'll, they'll be doing fur or something and they'll just be like, <laughs> Just like knock it out it's crazy um with the with the, the brushes you can do so dig, digital digital painting in general like as an advancement for for art creation is is it's pretty cool it may, sometimes it can make your life easier sometimes it makes your life harder i don't know um if you're familiar with true grit supply this is another really really good resource as i mentioned i'm all the time in um I'm all the time inside Procreate and that's like my jam. And I generally, when I do digital illustration or digital painting, I like that kind of like more rough grungy look. I don't like to go too soft or airbrushy or too, too pastel or clay. I like it to be a little bit more rough because I like that old school look, you know, I like to... I like inks and raw inks and pencils and charcoals and ballpoint pens. That's kind of my vibe. So I, I, I really like True Grit. You should definitely check them out. They have free packs too if you get started. I think you just like pop in your email address and they'll send you a bunch of free brushes. So definitely check that out if you have Procreate and or um, if you're using Photoshop. Um, yeah, they have they have some really good stuff. The other thing too that they that they have, which is awesome, is they have a bunch of distress packs and like these these uh, these comic book packs. So if you want to do like half tone effects, or if you want to do like etching, it's really it makes it it makes it makes your life a little bit easier. Again, you can build all this yourself, which I suggest if you really really want to you know really push yourself, try to make your own Photoshop brushes, try to make your own Procreate brushes, try to make your own textures. You know, get a get go get yourself an 11 by 17 piece of paper, watercolor paper, and get some black ink and some brushes and just and take pictures of it. Um, I don't know that that might be a cool little workshop to do one 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 week. We might we might do a little uh, we might do that. That that sounds kind of cool, like a little class subject. Um, Folio is another really really great resource for getting into uh procreate stuff like procreate brushes and resources i found this one which is what we're gonna demo today this is a a free paper and canvas texture pack so as i mentioned before with digital painting and like re real painting you can you you can use textures to simulate is to to simulate a realistic painting whether it's a canvas painting or a watercolor painting and so you can do that by just using a, a, a paper texture overlaid on top of the canvas. And again, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll show that. 
Um, but here's a here's a link. I'll drop this into chat. You guys can see it if you guys want to grab any of these paper textures. Um, I just dropped that into chat right now. So grab that if you guys want to follow along and um, definitely, definitely try it out. Um, cool. So before we get into playing around and talking about some of the concepts of digital painting and 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 design and 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 fundamentals of design general like general fundamentals we're going to look at some art we're going to look at some artist art i'm going to show you guys this, this is this is i've worked as an art director i've worked as a creative director and this is a a skill that is very it's important there there's there's classes about how to read art right and a lot of people they look at something like oh that's cool i like that you like it because why? Or you look at something that's very ugly that I, I you know, a, an abstract painting that I might look at. And I'm like, yo, that's that's an amazing piece of work. And you'll be like, oh, that's just scribbles. Why? Right. So reading art, how to break down art. We're going to look at a couple pieces by a few uh, just a small, small amount of artists on makers and we're going to look at like what are some of the things that they do that really brings out their 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 pieces whether it's their techniques their tricks the use of color texture and, and whatnot so this is a very important skill to have um and this is we're just follow along and then as you kind of see how i work through this start to when you're looking at other art that you see online whether it's crypto art or it's art in a museum start to use this this these techniques start to notice these things it will help you kind of understand <clears throat> excuse me understand and kind of figure out the patterns of how the artist is working so we're gonna look at Kate, katie errington's work um her stuff is great her 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 painting is 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 awesome i love her painting work um true digital painting as i would say like the use of airbrush technique and how she builds up her form and her color, her color tonal and value work is really, really good. And what I mean by that tonal color and value, tone, color, value, hue, what are those, what, what does that mean? Um, how do you identify that? And how do you like, like what, what, what does that mean exactly? So we're going to look at just this piece here. Okay. If I, to, to identify this, let's see if I can, can I mark? Can I do markups on uh, list? Let me mark up. No. Let's see. I got a little marker tool right here. Okay. Let's see. All right. So one of the things that I love about her work specifically is her use of temperature. Now, the temperature in the way that she does her shadows and her highlights, she pushes, she'll either push really, really cold, and then she'll also like complement it sometimes with a little bit more warmer colors. And what I mean by that is you can see the use of pink, like the use of pink right here. Whoa, that's not the, the kind of tool that I want. The use of pink right here, right? There's a, there's a little bit of pink right here and then it contrasts really really sharply with a little bit of blue and purple so she pushes those colors like she'll she, she she's really good at at tonal changes and that temperature change and you can see it here too that you see there's a, a very good pink pink blush mark here and then it goes into a pastel and then it goes even into like a very like a really light blue and then it pops with a contrast of like a more cooler grayed out purple. Um, so that use, the way that she does her 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 temperature changes is really, 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 really good. Uh, I really, really like her work. Um, the other thing too is that you see this dark line here. And then you can notice that it pushes lighter as it goes down and it pops, it, it kind of blends in. Um, just those little things, those little hollow ways of working with your dark, um, your dark levels is is really, really, really cool. Um, let's see. Let's go to her next piece. Do, do, do. Ah, this this is a, a awesome work right here. It's a beautiful piece. What I love about this is the color. The color palette here is just it's very there, there's a lot of citrus citrus colors in it the hues 
are very, you know, it's almost like candy. I see a lot of like, like this, the, the use of this yellow and that green, especially up here, right? Like that color palette with that orange, oof. Like those to me, that's just like magic, right? Like that's eye candy. Um, but one of the interesting things that she does here is she pushes, she'll, she uses the same kind of like yellow light, right? On the edge here as her as her her like secondary light that's coming in but if you notice on this side it gets lighter here right so you can see the the dark the dark the dark piece here whereas like most people would just kind of shade this all the way down she pops it back and what that does is it gives it gives an undertone uh highlight and that gives the shape a more bubbly feel. Um, you know, it's like it's, it's your back, your backlighting. Um, but her just her general this like this color palette is is amazing. Like the colors that are pushing through here, um, even this dark this dark blue for the eyebrow and how it kind of like goes into a lighter blue and then comes down. It's 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 really 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 well done. The other thing too that I really love about this piece is it, it feels a little bit rougher like uh, like uh, it has a little bit of a texture to it so it kind of feels like a pastel um like a pastel it's it's yeah it kind of th this piece this piece is the the colors here are just like i love it cool um let's look at mr alex pardee his work is crazy um if you guys are familiar with alex pardee he started dropping he just came in on um on um makers and he's now on super rare i've known alex for for years and years and years his work is he's like a he's like a master artist like he's been at it for for a long time and he, he does like mixed media he's just digital he does like his work is is really 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 crazy and and just like his imaginary like what he comes up with is always really really rad but what i love about his technique and what he does is he's He's very tight with some of this line detail. So you can see like all this little etching that he does and his line work, like all of this, all of these tapers, um, the way that he, he, he's very fine with those little lines and a lot of detail. And he, he uses those to build up and to really show that texture and that, 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 that like, you know, either slime or, or like wrinkles. Um, but what's really cool about his work, like in this piece, which I absolutely love is again, the, the, his use of color is, is really rich. He, he nails it, but he also is using black as an outline to really draw out and make it almost like appear very, you know, very graphical. Um, but there's little minor things in here. There's, there's, you can see the texture that he has going on here. You can see the, the, the little details in this area. Um, there's also these little tiny etch marks here that he's using his shadow color. So he's not using his line work color, but he's using his shadow color to etch, to give a little bit of a, a little bit of a texture. Um, and he does that here. That's a, it's, it's, it's more of a, like an illustration technique. Um, and then again, like that, that backlighting highlight, right? That, that mid tone that you can bring out on your darkest, darkest colors, um, that here again, that usage of being able to, or that, that use it, it gives that the shape, it doesn't make it feel so deep. It makes it feel like it's got, like the light is bouncing off the back. Those little tiny details are very, 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 very important. Um, yeah, and I mean, this piece too is is, is crazy. It's, it's I, look at this little face. <laughs> um, cool. Ooh. This, this guy's work is nuts, uh, Pascal. His work, it's it's almost a cross between like digital illustration and digital painting, which there is there is a difference, 
when you start to blur the lines. We look at like Katie Arrington's work where it looks painted. It's very painterly. And then we look at Alex, Alex Pardee's work where it looks painterly and illustrative. Illustrative meaning it's there's there's more line work to it it's more graphical it um has it, it plays off of the principles of of illustration as a as a compositional work now his work pascal's work is is very interesting because it's a combination of the two where it's it's there's there's painting where you can see where he's he's used textures and highlights to bring in and 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 pop but it also has like these these textures here, which give it more of a graphical element. And then there are some things in here where it almost looks, you know, like it's 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 like a 3D compositional piece that was photo manipulated and 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 painted together on top. So it's kind of a combination, like his work specifically is kind of a combination of all of them, where it's like he's he's using a lot of like a lot of those principles to to build up his work but at the final piece when i look at it it's like okay i notice these the use of texture right the the, new, the use of the half tones i think what's really really dope too that he does really well is the way that he pushes his dark tones up right so it's not just deep black he takes those dark tones and you can kind of see how it's blended it's it's like blended up now again this is his work might not be painted it might be more of just like uh like 3d work and and composition i'm not sure i haven't gone through his workflow if i had to guess i would say this is built off of like 3d models and images um but really 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 cool um just the use of color like i really love this like texture and these like you see this highlight here, how it has like a black outline and then it kind of like pushes light and then it like goes back to dark. Like this is, this is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like reading, reading art. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump into procreate because last week when I was using Photoshop, my, my computer was like going super slow. So we're going to just, we're going to jump into procreate. We're going to jam a little bit and we're going to talk about, um, some principles of, design um let's see cool so make sure i got my pencil i have my ipad on a tripod if you guys ever uh looking for a little ergonomic work a little ergonomic hack for for painting get yourself a ipad tripod it's pretty tight pretty cheap too amazon not bad um Okay, so as I was mentioning, this is, you know, br brushes, you can explore, you can create brushes, but there's there's tons of marketplaces to get brushes um, where you can get brushes that look very, very, very realistic, whether it be like an oil painterly brush or, um, you know, a, a airbrush. There's also like ink brushes. Um, I, I downloaded a pack of oil flat brushes, these here, that I got off of um, DeviantArt. I was just cruising around, just downloading stuff, and I was like, oh, I'll try these out. Um, but they, they have different wet modes and blending effects that kind of, you know, simulate that more of that digital, that, that physical painting aesthetic and look. Um, which you can see if I'm just like pushing around and just exploring these, like what, what kind of effects that I can get. Um, so I definitely suggest like get, getting, getting some brushes and playing around and kind of figuring out what works for you. I've, I've built some brushes out. I like to do more like digital illustration work. So like I, I build out liner brushes that I use for when I'm doing my lining or I'll have like rough lining liner brushes that I use if I'm trying to do something that's like a little bit more um, rough. And then recently I've been using a lot of stippling brushes, which I kind of built up because I like my shadows and, and my darker my darker colors to kind of blend out with the stippling. My favorite brush that I ever made was the ballpoint pen because it looks like a ballpoint pen. And this one I made 
um, by just adjusting the settings. I just went in there. Let's see. I don't even know what I used. I used um, I used a grain, and then I used uh, just the shape, and then I just tweaked the settings to where it it's rough and it looks like a ballpoint pen. Um, and I use this for most of my sketching. So anytime I'm doing like blue line work, if I'm sketching something, I always use this as kind of my 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 sketching tool. For some people, you'll use a pencil or you can use like, yeah, you can use kind of whatever you want. Um, and then, yeah, Procreate has like also just like built-in brushes for, for painting. Um, they have these oil paint brushes, which they're all right. I feel like you can definitely find some, some illustrators that have their, their own tools have or digital painters that have their own tools, have their own um, brush sets. Look at this fresco brush. It's a big blob brush. Look at that, making some texture, easy. Yeah, Procreate. Procreate, I would say like, you can jump in, you can just start painting really fast. It's pretty, pretty awesome. All right, so before we get into that, before we start to paint something, which I don't know what we're gonna paint. Maybe we'll paint like a pear or something. Um, let's just talk about like the fundamentals quickly of design, uh, fundamentals of design being, let's see, I forgot the fundam fundamentals of the design. Do you guys know the fundamentals of design? <laughs> this could be its own, this could be its own class right here. Fundamentals of design principles. Okay. So one is point point there's 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 several several uh what is the fundamental design uh point everything kind of starts at the point um the next you have line and you have shape okay then you have is it form size you have size and then you have do 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 do, do. trying to look i i built this up before <laughs> fundamentals of design Hmm. I'm trying to find, I should have pulled this PDF PDF up earlier. Cause I drew all this stuff out. Well, I'll try to remember it off the top of the dome. We'll see, we'll see how far I get. Um, the other thing that you have too, that's really interesting with when it comes to like fundamentals of, of design is not only when you're looking at something that has point line, shape, size, you also have form, like a like form is when you start to look at objects that are that are have you know, multiple dimensions in space, um, and then you have color, which is your 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 standard standard color set. Let's see. So let's throw some colors on here. Dun, 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 dun. And then you have tone or you have value. Value is as colors. Let's see, let me change my brush up. Okay, so here we have color. We'll do RGB. Okay. And then as colors start to go down in tone, they get grayer. So here's this green going down a gray scale. And you could even imagine my blue going down in a gray scale. Okay. And then you have value, value being your, your brightness where if I have like this blue, I can push this, 
I can change the brightness of this blue. Okay, so what's important here with color specifically is how can you, how can you use temperature to kind of pop and temperature to, 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 to use on your shading and in, in, in your highlights using temperature to kind of change things. So as you start to build up form and you start to build up value, understanding how light comes into play. So if you have an object like um, we'll just draw like a little, little blob. Oops. Let's change this up. Okay. So I have like an egg looking thing here. Now I have my light coming here. I can imagine my light's going to hit on this side. I'm going to have sh shading going this way. So this is like my, my little pair. Looks like a, looks like something. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> Um, but you can see it as I start, kind of start to shape this, where my light's going to be, I have my shadow, I have my highlight where my highlight's going to be, and then I have my, my darker colors here as I start to push this. So understanding where your light is, understanding where your, your shadows and your cast shadows, and then also your, your, your backlighting. So when doing this, when drawing something like this, to use the temperature to kind of change, using temperature to kind of reflect that. So let's go ahead and let's let's try it out. Let's draw let's draw a pair. So I'm gonna just start on a new layer now. I'm gonna sketch out a pair. Okay. I'm gonna just pull up a pair on my screen so I can see what colors we want to use. Shout outs to all the pairs. Y'all remember when Rick Ross said that? <laughs> It's like pears, shout outs to all the pears. <laughs> cool, ooh, I got some good pears. Okay, so I'm gonna just start out by sketching this. So I'm gonna lay down kind of my, my where I want my horizon line to be. Again, thinking of like perspective, this is like a still life, still life demo. Like, yeah, we'll see. Um, and then my, my shape of my objects, I'm going to draw right here. So I'm just using a light, light brush to sketch. You can use like a pencil brush. So I'm going to just draw these. I'm just using the use loose lines to, to, to figure out where I want to ink. Um, and then I'm going to draw some little stems. I'm going to draw a leaf. And then this pair is cut open. And it has little seeds in it. Cool. I have my horizon line here. Now, let me erase out some of this. All right. So I can start this out as like my, my, my base sketch. Okay. Now, digital painting, there's a lot, 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 lot of different ways to attack digital painting. Some digital painters I see, they just jump in and they start blasting out color. Um, I've seen this, some people, there's two, two, two main methods that, I, that, I've, that I've experimented with, but some people that I see that jump in is they'll just jump in and they just start, like, start laying down color and they know exactly how to build stuff up. You can watch those videos on YouTube of painters doing this and they're like, -do 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 -do, you know, it plays like all like fast music and then all of a sudden magically they have some, some, some art there. Another technique that I use, and this is what I just found is like an easy trick for, for, for me personally, and this, I kind of picked this up from doing digital illustration is I use more of a masking technique and it all, it all varies. If you're doing more loose, like concept illustration, obviously you wouldn't do this, but like when it comes to something like this, like I'm going to actually like outline my shape first. 
So I'm going to draw like, let's say on a new layer, I'm going to go ahead and just outline my pair. And fill that in. And using this, I now have a mask. I have a mask layer. Um, and I can do this again for the, the other pair on this side. Boom. And I just fill that in. The reason why I do it like this is because now that I have this shape, I can just turn this into alpha lock and I can lock in the color so that that way I can, or I can lock in the shape. So that way I can build a mask around this and I can just start painting. So I'm gonna go to that um, oil brush set that I downloaded earlier today. Let's grab like a, like a thick, thick oil brush. And I'm gonna just start popping in some color. So you can see I can like, by using the alpha lock, it, it keeps that shape. Uh, it locks, it, it, it builds basically a mask. Um, actually, let's see. I just downloaded these, so I don't know quite what, how they work. Ooh. And then there's, uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly just blop in some, some color here on my mask shape. And I'm going to, I'm gonna do this very loose. Like if I was, if I was trying to explain how to do this really, really easy without getting too technical, it's just putting down, down my dark pieces, put them, you can start, you can work backwards. You can work from dark and put light on top or you can do, light to dark on top um, but then a trick because i'm using the i'm using the um the masking technique is i can just pull in and i can just smudge and kind of blend these blend these in um this is this is this is really 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 easy way for for making it look like you are doing some digital painting <laughs> it's like a like a like a little hack and again, I picked this up from doing digital illustration work um, where like, you know, using using the mask and blending, like instead of like painting your your blends, like just blending what you already have. And you, you kind of work it, honestly, like you kind of just like, like massage the color. And again, like digital, you're gonna always get like, a, you always get a break from like phys physical painting. Like if I did this in acrylic, right? Like I have to I have to be very cautious about like how I how I build up my color and and all of that fun stuff. So this brush is a little harsh, so I turned down the opacity, but you can see I like I was able to blend that quite fast by just putting some blobs down. Um So you can start to build up some form really 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 easily. Now again, all I did was I just created a shape mask and then I started using the smudge tool. So if I got back into here and I want to make this look a little bit more Perry, Perry, it's got to put some green in it. This pear's got a little green in them. So I can now start to, with my opacity, adjusting my opacity, I can start to bring out some of the, the more greener colors and I can even I can even um, start to use that to blend, right? Now that I have my undertones, my, my darker values that I wanted. Um, and again, I'm using a, a shape mask technique. So it's, it's, everything's tight. And let's see, let's push this up. Doo -doo. Oh yeah, we talked about that last week. You gotta make sound effects when you draw. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a lighter color to bring out like where my highlight areas are. And I just kind of like massage that out. See, it's just kind of like, like a spinning technique. This, this pair here, I worked dark, dark to light. 
Um, and then if, if some of my lines are too harsh, and I need a little bit of blend. I can use that smudge tool. I can come in and I can start to smudge. See that it's like magic. Um, now one of the, the, the illustrations that we were looking at on Alex's work and Katie's work, they had, they had those under highlights. So what that, that bike backlighting, what I can do is on my darker edge, even here, I'm going to push this a little bit darker and this, the colors are a little, colors are a little too orange. Um, I might adjust it, but, um, if I have like a darker edge where I want to give more volume to my shape and I like kind of like blend that in really simply. Do, do, do. So yeah, I, I, I can even just be messy with it. Like, like just make it work. And then using that blend tool to kind of, or that smudge smudge tool to kind of blend everything together. Now, if I wanted to make this have like an undertone, I can pull some of this color here in the middle, this lighter, this lighter color that I have here. And I'm gonna just edge this at the very edge. Um, and just kind of like blend that out and it gives it it gives it a little bit of a it gives a little bit more volume to it um and then yeah you can just go back in and blend it so it kind of like pops it up a little bit um this pair though is not pear color what colors are pears They're like eh, that's a little bit better it's a little too saturated it's just the color Coo, 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 coo. Um, all right, cool. And then on this pair here, shout outs to all the pairs. Got like little specks in it. Let's draw, let's see. It's like little, little, little texture specks. So you could go in and you could draw all these little specks. All right, you could draw a bunch of specks. Or you could use like a brush that has that all built in. And you just go to town with it. Um, let's see. I'm going to add in a little bit more color up here. Doo -doo. Sorry, I'm like blasting through this. Mm. Painting brush. I'm using just the built-in brushes. So a little bit of more shade up here. Again, just like I'm being a little like more rough with it. Because I'm gonna blend it anyways. Like rah, 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 rah. right? And then using the smudge tool, I can kind of figure out how to make those colors blend into each other. It's like just a just a simple shading technique. Pump it up a little bit. Do do do. Okay, so now I have that. Let's see. The standard, let's say, I think, I think there's a texture in here that we can use, organic maybe. Give it some clouds. Ooh, some zombie skin. <laughs> Flicks, how about that? Boop, perfect. Okay, make these a little bit smaller. And I can use this to kind of like build up some texture. It's like how I want my, my pair to look. And then, yeah, pretty, pretty simple technique using masking layers to kind of build stuff up. Um, a lot of people sometimes what I've seen them do too is they'll use they'll use layers. Um, here's another cool little trick using a so here's here's a trick for sometimes what I've done for illustration or, or shading is I have like a base object here and it doesn't look like it has a, a, a lot of form. I want to bring that I want to bring the shape out. I want it to look a little bit more 3D. I want to have more more volume to it. So I'm going to duplicate this. I have alpha lock on and I'm going to, here's the, the basic way to do it. I'm going to fill the layer black, right? And turning down the opacity, I start to build up some shadow, but it's, it, it's not rich. So 
let's let's work with temperature. So instead of doing black, I'm gonna do it blue, okay? Now I'm gonna use my eraser tool to erase out where my highlights were, okay? Um, I'm gonna use a softer brush. Let's go to back to the spectra brush. I'm gonna use the spectra brush and I'm gonna erase out where my highlights are. Give it, give it a little bit more volume. Now you can see this is this is harsh, but now if I start to change the way that it overlays on top of this, if I change it down to multiply, you can see by adding that little bit of blue, that temperature, right? As I adjust this, like I can start to build up some more like a, like a, a different kind of effect. Um, and you don't have to do it for the whole thing. You can just do it for some parts and you can blend it around. Obviously you can smudge some of this turn off alpha lock I can smudge some of this to kind of bring it but you can see i can kind of use those layer modes to build up and to to add some more interesting colors and tones in there the other thing too is like what i've i've done in the past with experimenting with like temperature is like okay say i want to even go even colder with this um i just want to bring out some of the temperature i can pull up let's see Like I want to like hit some of this blue in here, right? To give it give it a little bit of a little bit of a, like a highlight color, and then obviously you can go in and clean it up. Smudge it around. Uh, the the other overlay that I really like to work with is using a difference, and then. Yeah, you can like push it like a difference, right? Difference is, I love putting blue, like a very teal blue and then doing difference. It kind of, it always, it, it always plays with the levels of color. Um, and you can get, you can get more of like a, you can see how just working this now, I've, I've now added like some purples and I've added some, it, it just changed the tone. It changed the temperature completely from like this to this. Like it almost starts to look a little bit more oily, right? Um, or even more like vintage look. And I'm making a kind of a mess here. I'm just like playing around. Um, and then boom, throw a paper texture on top of it. You can see like, oh, he almost looked like he's making digital art. <laughs> um, so yeah, so let's go into pair number two. Actually, we'll finish this pair up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead on a new layer. I'm just, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna build out the stem and the leaf. Just get some brown. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm using more of like a illustration technique where I'm drawing these in. Uh, depending on like how you paint or your style of painting, you can, you can jump in and paint it. You can do, yeah, you could jump in and paint it or you can um, do something like this, but I, I love working with shapes and then using those shapes as my masks. Um, it always, it just, it works for me. It's, everyone's different, but like, I do, I do too. I, I like some of the, the graphic, graphic look sometimes. Um, so here's my, here's my leaf. I can like clean this up. Oops. Let me grab the eraser. Why not? Say I wanted to bring a top, a top leaf in. Here's another little trick that I used to use when doing di digital illustration work is duplicate your layer. Um, this is really, really simple erasing technique for doing highlights. Now I duplicated the layer and I'm gonna make it brighter. Okay. And so I have two, two on top of each other and I'm gonna use my eraser 
to bring out that other leaf. Okay, so I just erased out because what I want is I want this bottom leaf to pop out. And you can see that after I'm done, once I erase all this out, like I want a leaf to look like it's folded over. Really, really kind of a cheap little cheat trick. Um, but now that I have this shape here, let me turn off my sketch. And let me move all the pair objects down. Mm -hmm. So I have these. Now I can switch them to alpha lock. And that means that like, again, whatever I draw on the inside when it's alpha locked is only going to stay within the bounds of that shape. All right, it's just a, just like a, a masking, masking technique. Um, I can take this color and I'm going to push it a little bit more blue. I'm going to darken it and I'm going to go back to that painting brush that I was using. The spectra brush and I can just work that. So you see that top leaf now is kind of gave me a little, gave, gave me a little like depth. Um, and you can even pull this darker if you wanted. And notice I'm not I'm not getting too much in the detail of like the veins and the spikes and all that. That's all, that's all stuff I can add later. Um, and then again, you can come in with the smudge tool if you want, depending on like how how you're trying to make it look. I like having my stuff have a little bit more texture in it. So sometimes I'll come in with the like the little dots that I made. Where are they stippling? Like I like I like having a little bit of stippling effect in there. Just a little bit of texture just makes it feel feel a little bit more organic. And you can see it's like very minor sometimes. Um, even on the pear shape here, like bringing out those textures, right? Like it, it kind of, like adding a little bit of texture on your work always goes a long way. Um, and then like on this leaf here, we can pull some more color into it. So this is set to alpha lock as well. And we're going to go ahead and pull this down and we're gonna, we're gonna push the hue a little bit cooler as well. And I'm just gonna blend a little bit. And again, alpha lock. So all the color that I'm doing is gonna stay within the bounds of this object. And darken it a little bit. Okay. Now I have this shape this rough shape and I'm like, okay, well, I want it to look a little bit more like leaf. So I got my eraser tool and we're gonna add in some detail. We're just gonna like notch it up a little bit. And I'm just erasing out. Could have did this first, I guess. Again, it all depends on like how you, how you wanna work. I'm showing you kind of a mixed a mixed way of working like using eraser using using um masking and again like i could do that over here i can start to like bring out some of this 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 shape of this this little little edges here that's a pair Looking like a pear. Check it out. It looks like a leaf. And then I can make a new layer and I can jump in and I can start painting on that. Um, this is where I might want to define my like stem, right? Um, say I have a stem and I, I want to have like veins in this leaf just to bring it out. And I'm just doing this like, it's a little bit more graphical. It doesn't look perfect, but I can make it look perfect later. I'm not too worried about it. And I add in some, some more veins to it. Okay, now what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna use the blending modes after I did this little vein and I'm gonna change them 
I'm going to change the blending mode to light and I'm going to lower it. Um, because I want to, I want to maintain some of that texture that I had in there. So let's see, we'll play around with it. Oh, soft light. Ooh, ice veins. The ice king touched this pair and it turned into ice veins. <laughs> now we could go, we could go. Uh, maybe I wanted a little bit lighter like that. I'm gonna do hard light. And I'm going to desaturate it, brighten it a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is on top of that, I'm gonna grab a, more of a toned down color and I'm gonna grab a really small brush. I'm gonna paint a little bit of highlight on it. Hmm. Paint, where's the painting? There we go. So you like pull it, pull a little bit of highlight in there just to make it look like it's got some lift. And again, you can, I'm, I'm just blasting through this, but you can spend as much time as you want. And there's, there's even simpler ways. I think one of the exercises that we would do um, when I worked at this game company was the art director would have us do these blocking exercises, which were pretty fun. Um, basically, how can you draw something like the simplest form shape of something in the most minimal amount of color blocks? Let's change this color first before we get into that. Let's like tone this down. There we go. It's looking a little bit more like a little pear. Okay, so like how can you, actually, no, we gotta finish the pear. See? <laughs> jumping around, jumping around too much. Let's see, I'm gonna just add a quick, quick little, quick little couple things. Draw like a dark point. And then I'll show you guys the blocking technique. Oh, I didn't even work on my stand. Alpha lock. Let's grab a darker color of this and push it. Always try to, anytime you're doing your, your, your shading or your highlights, always adjust the hue. Okay. Always adjust the hue. Don't, don't just strictly change just the brightness. Like the, the common mistake is, okay, I want to make something darker. I want to just tone down the brightness and I'm going to make it darker, right? Yeah, that works. But what you want to do is take your, your mid tone, whatever your, 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 your color is, pull it a little bit darker, adjust the saturation, either make it more saturated or less saturated and pull the hue, pull the hue, make it either a little bit cooler or a little bit warm. Um, just using that color, color, those coloring techniques will make your, your illustration start to look more rich. It's how you pull in, pull in um, like richer, richer colors and, and, and make your work stand out and be a little bit more dynamic. And then you can always, you know, go back and stuff, but like, let's see. Say for instance, I want to draw the, the, the top of this stem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it more yellow. I'm going to desaturate it. I'm going to use that as my starting point. So like that as the color starting point already starts to starts to bring it out a little bit more, right? Um, and then I can always go in and tighten it up with, with, with whatever these colors are. Say I want to add like a little, you know, break, break my stem up. You can even go in and smudge it if you want. Just like little blending techniques. It's pretty simple, pretty easy just to get in there. Um, for this, I'm going to add just a little bit of highlight right here, just so it looks like it was like cut. Now, again, uh, the, the technique of having under like your highlights sit next to your darkest shadows. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, just quickly just add like a little bit of a shadow on this, like a little drop shadow. This is a really fast pair. This is like rushing through it. 
Shout outs to all the pairs. And then you just smudge it. If you're lazy like me, you just like smudge. So a real painter, real digital painter would have like light source coming from somewhere to have like a cast shadow if you wanted to make it longer or if you wanted to, you know, depending on where your shadow was. Let's see, let me clean this up real quick. Just cleaning up some of this, just erasing. I'm, again, I'm being a little bit more loose with this one. This is just like a very simple, simple, simple little thing. Um, let's see, add in a little bit more shadow in here. I'm gonna change this brush down. Let's get this oil brush. Now again, you would want to, if you're working with your like your darks and your lights, right? Like bringing some of those darker colors like even down further to really give it some depth, like your shading. Um, I'm just kind of blending this. Eh, it doesn't look like it's sitting there, but you get it, you get it, you get it, you get it. Um, yeah, okay, so another quick one to jump in is the blocking exercises. So we used to do these blocking exercises um, where you have to use a very big brush and you have to only, you can only use like two or three colors. So like say I wanted to make an orange, like I have a very big brush and I can only use like three colors and I can't go in and, and detail it. So I can only like, like just put blocks. Oops, I'm gonna go even lighter here. Like you can only use blocks, right? This is more of like an impressionism, impressionism style technique. But like, if you get into warming up, your, warming up your illustration by doing like this kind of impressionism, like, like, technique where you just start to think of things as like you know the if you wanted to minimize the amount of of detail right like you want to really start to think about like your colors and your hues and and using this as like an exercise to either establish like your shadow like understanding form or understanding just just general like how to use color using a blocking technique to draw things is is it's a good little warming exercise it kind of train tr starts to train your brain to to look at things a little bit different um you know like say say you know to, you want to keep it rough like what is the rough shape of this um if you look at like matisse paintings and you look at just general general impressionism as as a as a um as an art form um you can definitely see it when people start to block things. Um, and it, it, it's, it's a good exercise. I, I think I showed you guys the other week how silhouetting works. So like sil sil silhouetting is a technique for like character design. So it's basically just like if you drew like your silhouette of like a character, it's like maybe there's a guy with like a backpack, who's got a leg. You know, we did this with the pixel exercise. You just kind of like scribble some stuff in. You can start to use this to build up, to build up the the the, the highlights of what where someone might be standing, right? Like it's it's kind of you just really want to be very minimal with it. And you do when you do this kind of work, you want to do like forty of them or twenty of them. Like you want to you want to kind of like it, it it's like an exercise think of it as like when you do jumping jacks you don't just do one jumping jack right you do like 20 jumping jacks so when you're doing exercises like this whether it's like a blocking exercise or a speed painting exercise really just move through them like you know how, how you'd want to like say say i want to make like a strawberry strawberry i'm just going to block it in really fast Speed painting. 
and then try to think of like the colors that I want to push up in temperature. Maybe I even want to push this more, more yellow here, right? See how I changed the temperature on that? The temperature. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's like, it's like a, it's like a, like a paint sketching technique. That kind of looks like a strawberry, kind of doesn't look like strawberry. So yeah, digital painting rundown. That was it. That's all I got for you guys today. But I have something even cooler than this. Okay. So this is week three. We covered pixel illustration. We looked at photo manipulation and we just barely touched on some digital painting. I want to see what you guys got. So I worked on a coloring book with TikTok. Right, I got a bunch of these coloring books. I wanna give some away. So what I wanna see is you guys gotta submit some artwork. Let's see what you guys got. Let's see what you guys are working with. Um, let's do a little contest. I'm going to figure out how to set something up. Allegria, I'll work with you. Um, I wanna give out some, some coloring books. So I wanna see some artwork. Now, the rules are, the rules, the rules to enter. You got to choose one of the three techniques that we covered in the last three weeks. Okay. So you could do a pixel art piece. You can do a Photoshop manipulate, like photo manipulation piece or a digital painting piece. Okay. That's the only rule. If you come through with some 3d stuff and you come through with some crazy thing that we didn't talk about, I'm gonna be like, Oh, that looks real good, but you didn't follow the rules. So top shot, uh, you got to make a dope pixel piece i want to see someone really get down with some pixel painting or let's see some like photoshop manipulation work i want to see i want to see some really cool stuff and then uh digital painting if anyone can make a digital painting of a still life and make it look like an oil painting or a watercolor painting then you're in business okay so those are the those the, that's what i want to see i'm going to post on twitter a way to a way to enter your your piece and then next week we'll look at all the work and we'll kind of let's let's have a little little showcase okay and then i'll be giving out some coloring books so tune in next week same time you know what time it is it's time for art school and it's ta taco tuesday and we're gonna go get some tacos now sound good all right <laughs> all right all right all right let's get it all right, everybody, have a good Tuesday. I'll, I'll catch you guys next week. Adios.